Today, we're going to be talking about Jigsaw and Suburbicon, so stay tuned. Welcome to The Real Review. Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. And I'm here with Matt. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hey. <laughs> it's so good. I gotcha. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you like it? Yeah. yeah. Little Stranger Things there for you guys. Yep. We're going to be talking about that one. It's a true story. TikTok. Yeah. I'm here with uh, Joel Burbicon. Hey, Cunningham. Burbicon. Joel Burbicon. Joel Burbicon. That's kind of, that works, yeah. Joel Burbicon. Joel Burbicon. I don't know what the con added to Suburbicon actually adds to the name. It yeah. makes it sound official, I guess. I don't know what what it means. I don't even know. Yeah. So know. yeah, but we're gonna be talking about that movie, Suburbicom. Yes. True story. I said Bur- Suburbicom. So uh, yeah. So welcome to the podcast, everybody. Here on the podcast, this is Matt. I'm Joel. We do a little bit of a breakdown where Matt's kind of more of a fan type perspective. I tend to be more of a kind of uh, critical type perspective sure but uh we meet in the middle and we give you what we give what we consider to be a real thought and a real perspective of film so matt why don't you give our listeners and our watchers here on the vidcast a couple awesome ways that they can get connected yes up you going. i'm gonna drink my coffee in you the drink meantime. that thing drink there that thing go. good it's very tasty so you can get connected with us on our social media platforms that's uh instagram twitter facebook um all at real review media facebook is slash real review media uh, and then you can find us on our website, realreviewmedia.com. Uh, email us, realreviewmedia at gmail.com, YouTube, uh, slash The Real Review. So that's how you can do that. It's all kind of really great stuff, and we're posting stuff as much as we can. And uh, it's been a crazy week as far as stuff that we've had to, <laughs> to, 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 to do. Yeah, to jump around to get here to do the podcast and everything. Yeah. I, I gave you, you're not drinking your Capri Sun. I haven't had one of these since I was like seven, so I'll you should have to, started uh, to try and open it now, so that way by the end of the podcast you can actually have it open and be drinking it. That was my big problem with those when I was a kid. I could never get them open. Yeah, well, I don't know if you had that problem. I don't know. I don't know if I can do this right now. We'll see. We'll all see. Right. We'll, have, yeah. we'll see how the show goes. <laughs> Sounds good. So, uh, all right. So we got the two movies. We got Jigsaw and Suburban Combo, yep. of which just came out. Matt, why don't you lead things off? Take things away from us, <laughs> from yeah. us, for us. Yeah, with uh, Jigsaw. Let's do this thing. So. Jigsaw. Um, basically, synopsis, bodies are turning up around the city, each having met a uniquely gruesome demise. As the investigation proceeds, evidence points to one suspect, John Kramer, the man known as Jigsaw, who has been dead for 10 years. This is directed by the Spearig brothers, Michael and Peter, mm-hmm. and uh, has a bunch of people I don't really know other than uh, Tobin Bell who's kind of the main guy. And then also Matt Passmore, Callum, Keith, Renee is some of the main people in there. Yep. But um, yeah, I saw this. You did not. Mm-hmm. I, uh, have I you seen the review. How many? Um... I've seen the first five. Really? Which okay. Which sounds ridiculous to even say. I but know. <laughs> it's like, oh, I've seen the first five of eight, you know? Is there seven or eight? There's. This is the eighth. This is the eighth, Jigsaw's right. the eighth one. Because it went six and then it went- uh, Final the, chapter. Final chapter, which yep. is like 3D- the 3D yeah, version? Saw 3D final chapter. 3D. Yeah. yeah. So which is not the actual final chapter. I right, think. exactly. So this is this is the attempt in kind of a way to uh it's been seven years since they released the Saw movie. They to reinvigorate the franchise. You can kind of tell that's probably what they're trying to do. They want to try and claim Halloween again as like the Saw right. time of the year. Yep. Um I will say that this movie um was was not great or even like uh, on a scale of good is really being really good. Yeah. But it was definitely passable and one of the better of the franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to do it now, but I would love to hear kind of where you rate it on the scale of one to seven. Yeah. Of all yeah, the other yeah. ones. Well, hands down, uh, first one, first and second are my favorite in that order. Gotcha. First and then second. I would agree with that too. Yeah. 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 Um, in addition to that, uh, they, what's good about this is, Every Saw movie has some sort of twist that they're kind of hold back from mm-hmm. you on until the very end. Right. They're and known then, for that. And then and then they explain it all. Um, this one looked as if they were going to give you... I'm not going to spoil anything here, and I don't even want to get into spoilers, but um, the this one actually uh, gives you two big potential twists. One of them is kind of... Um, 
kind of a pull a rug out from under you type thing where they're yeah. like they're setting it up for something that I thought was going to be really really fascinating. Yeah. And how they were going to pull it off. Yeah. I think and, I know what you're talking about. And I and I was like I was like how are they going to do this? I was like, this is really crazy to me. And at the end, they're like, oh, just kidding. We were just kind of <laughs> messing around here. But yeah. here's the real twist. Yeah. And it was okay. Yeah. Um, and and it doesn't really break the mythology. It doesn't ruin the saw canon, if you will. Right, which but, is such a confused mess. I know. That was one of the problems after the fifth movie. One of the things I loved about him was those twists. But it, it told a pretty complex narrative. Right. And it, at first, I just thought... When I was watching them, I'm sorry, I'm sidetracking, but yeah. <laughs> I like maybe I'm just not doing well with like following the story. Maybe I'm just not paying enough attention. Yeah. But then when I started to like read synopses and things like that, I was like, no, these are just really poorly constructed a right. lot of the time. They're just trying to wedge things in in places. Right. And right. so that's what they do. So they wedge things in places, but they do it uh, even if it um, even if it kind of makes the story overall like muddled and but they still fit in the congruency in the timeline of I believe the happening. technical term for muddled in film is called weak sauce. Right. I believe that's weak the sauce. technical term. It's in Webster's. Yes. Um, so Under sauce, comma, weak. Yeah, as far as that's concerned, the twist <laughs> was know. the twist was kind of cool. I enjoyed it. Um, they kept me guessing. This movie is less of a horror movie, and I think a lot of the really? Saw films haven't really been hor- like a horror film. There are horrific elements, yes, but it's not like you're scared. There are things where you're definitely watching, and you're like... Very squeamish about, yeah. Yeah, and even even on that front, it's not incredibly, it's not, it's, I should say this, it's graphic a few times, but it's not over the top every time, like the last few More, saws have been. Yeah, less than the few last few? Yes. Because that's kind of where they there's, moved into. <laughs> there's one scene at the very end that I was like, oh, that's really graphic, but, okay. but for the most part, um, it's... Uh, I, I was surprised they even cut away a couple of times. I was like, oh, they didn't even that is surprising. show that. That's kind of what they're known for. Right. But then there's m- maybe one or two times where I was like, oh, that's that's really brutal. But okay. um, for the most part, I like the way that this one was filmed as well. Um, it doesn't have the one thing that I like about this movie is it doesn't have the the traditional um, saw, like hyper fast, like spinning around the yeah. person dun, 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 and the people shaking dun, 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 and like screaming dun, 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 in the background. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so the music yeah. is there. And they do that weird like slow right. shutter thing where yeah. the guy's like... Exactly. Yeah. It, the the music is still there, but none of those film techniques are there. So it mm. gives it gives the movie a different feel. Yeah. Um, which I liked. It wasn't like frantic and yeah. um, I didn't care for the... I didn't like that either when the original was because it always felt like they were rushing through the actual story yeah. just to get back to the torture stuff. Right. So and I was like, well, that's what makes it interesting yeah. is finding out why and how. So the the I, I liked I liked those elements of it. it. Had definitely a better movie feel about it. I liked I liked uh, I liked the kind of the story twists at the end. I thought that was kind of cool. Biggest letdowns for me was the first twist that I thought was happening. I thought they were going to go there. They mm. didn't go there. The <laughs> uh, second thing was I didn't really care about any of the characters with the exception of maybe one. Yeah. And and I feel like I, and me being the emotional one, I have to connect yeah. with somebody for it to be really, <laughs> you know, emotional. Yeah. And this just wasn't that kind of a thing. Um, yeah, you could at least say that the first two movies in particular, there are people like in the second movie, the kid, I forget his name. Yeah. And know, Donnie I, Wahlberg's character too. Yeah. You're really connecting with people that are kind of going through these ordeals. Yeah. And that's what makes it in a way like you can't look away because you right. want to know what's going to happen to these poor people. Right. So yeah, I, I totally agree, which they never followed up with happened with that kid. Right. No. Spoilers. So yeah. yeah. So he, spoiler, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen Saws one through three, they actually killed the dad off in the, in the, third one i think in the third third or fourth the one i can't remember fourth actually a yeah because he, the third's all stupid yeah oh yeah sorry and the, then fourth the fourth one is he gets, redemptive for the third right sort of. so he ends up getting uh yeah yeah he ends yeah, up yeah. getting caught in the same room right but they never find one. out what happens to his son like yeah you we don't thought, hear about that you would think and this is just going with the whole canon of how saw films work that he would end up being one of jigsaw's like helpers at some point i wouldn't right. be surprised if they pulled him back in and you're like who is he well and then he they show is... you a photo of him in the safe and you're like oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah yeah exactly that'd be yeah. crazy yeah but uh as far as this movie is concerned it's not great or relatively like good it's okay um in terms of the Saw franchise, I'd probably go one, two. Uh, so first one, hands down, like above the rest. Second, and then maybe six. It's it, right now. Um, it's six or Jigsaw are my tied for third spot. Okay. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah. I mean, I, if I had to rate it, I'd probably give it a like a 
70 one seventy two, okay. so C minus. Are you interested in them continuing the ser- the show, the series, the not series? Show. Practically yeah, a show. I could be fine without it. I thought it was yeah. okay, but I, um, if they would have gone with the first twist, I would have been like, yes, right. I want to see more of these, you gotcha. know. But and um, I know the twist you're talking about. Yeah. I'm not talking about. Yeah, it. Let's not talk about it. But um, but I get what you're if saying. you go see it, there's something that they tease about halfway through the movie, and they kind of let like let it linger and hang on for a while, and then and then they're like, just kidding. So, um, but yeah, it's C C minus, which isn't terrible. It's it's okay. Yeah. Um, acting if, wise, I acting mean. acting was was mediocre. It, I felt like it was better than the last few though. Yeah. Um, they definitely got some better. There's one scene that bo- bothered me in the trailer. It's when the little Billy the puppet comes riding out on the bicycle yeah. and then one guy is like, oh yeah, that's not creepy at all and does this weird <laughs> like head thing Yeah, and it's in the movie and that's the only part I didn't like in the trailer and the only part I didn't like in the movie. It's just, right. it was goofy. I thought that was a goofy. He's like, oh, that's not creepy at all. Trying to add a little levity yeah. is kind of what I thought maybe. It wasn't necessary. Yeah. Um, it didn't make me like that character anymore. Right. Um, so, so you, the big thing that I would also say that you get from these films when you watch them is like this idea of terror. Everybody's right. being terrorized and you're on that ride. Did you feel like that's really what they were embracing with the tone? Was it more toned in a different direction? Yeah, it wasn't, cut away a lot it was and, more intense, uh, or and it wasn't more intense. It was just an intense movie. It wasn't a lot of horror. There was some elements towards the end, like I said, where, um, there might be, you know, the only horror elements I really feel like are when the, and this is in the old Saw movies too, um, other than the gore is like when the pig mask person is hiding somewhere and they pop out or they're about yeah. ready to that, that's right. traditional, like jump horror, scare jump, stuff. jumpy yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's not like that. It's definitely gruesome, um, in some spots, but not to the degree in which the previous movies were. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of my, if you're, if you're a fan of Saw, if you've seen the other seven films, go see it. Cause I'm, you'll probably like it. I mean, you've held on for this long. Why not? So you're telling our <laughs> fans to go see Saw. Seesaw. Go seesaw. Seesaw. No, only seesaw if that's kind of your if your jam. If 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 it's not, then don't. If you've never seen a saw movie, don't start with yeah. this. <laughs> What's the first one? That would be so confusing. That would be really confusing. I would like, actually be interested to find out if anybody if anybody be any watchers, any listeners have done that. They just went and saw the jigsaw one. That'd be and so weird. It. Yeah, that let me weird. know. That if you funny. If what you've done that before and you just jumped in like halfway through like and you started with Saw 5 or something. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, what? Well, like when I went and saw Blade Runner, we went yeah. with somebody that didn't see the first Blade right. Runner. And they were like, meh. Like they didn't, right. they didn't feel like it made that big They didn't appreciate it yeah. as much, yeah. I think it depends on the film. But this one is definitely one that you would probably have wanted to see the ones prior. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. So any other thoughts? No, that's it. That's what I got for that one. Cool. Well, then we'll move on. Let's move on. We'll go to our next film, which is a film called Suburbicon. Joel Burbicon. Joel Burbicon, yes. Synopsis for this is Suburbicon is a peaceful, idyllic suburban community community with affordable homes and manicured lawns, the perfect place to raise a family. In the summer of 1959, the Lodge family is doing just that. But the tranquil service masks a disturbing reality as husband and father, Gardner Lodge, must navigate the towns. I don't know if I said lodge or lounge. I don't know. It's okay. Longitudinal. You're not going to need to know. That's all (laughs) I'm going to say. Yeah. Gardner Lodge must navigate the town's dark underbelly of betrayal, deceit, and violence. Uh, This tale of very flawed people making very bad bad choices. This is Suburbicon, directed by George Clooney, written by Ethan Cohen, Joel Cohen, uh, Grant Heslov, George Clooney, uh, stars a number of folks um biggest names matt damon as gardner lodge julianne moore as margaret as well as his wife um who's in it very briefly at the beginning so she actually plays a twin okay um oscar isaac as roger uh gary Bessaraba as uncle mitch uh jack conley as hightower glenn fleshler as ira and um crud i forget the little kid's name noah jupe as nikki jupe or jupe i don't know whatever oh, okay one of those yeah again it's not gonna matter it's all good so this film is written as a satire. Um, if you're familiar, you're probably pretty familiar with the Cohen style. Does it feel of writing? Does it feel more Cohen or does it feel more Clooney? It felt like that was so. I didn't enjoy this movie, okay. and it's getting a lot of flack right now. It felt like the main reason that I'm assuming for that is it felt like a Cohen movie with the heart taken out of it and turned into a sort of a confused mess. Okay, you're not really left knowing or understanding any reason for why anybody does anything in this movie except for maybe Nikki, who's in the film, he's uh, Matt Damon's son. Okay. 
But for the most part, he's just kind of in a survival mode throughout most of this movie. And it does this weird mashup, which I think the Coen brothers can do so well. Like they didn't know, I'm um, sorry, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah. Where it's this kind of hodgepodge of culture, but in sort of a, I don't know how you would call it, um, sensationalized mm-hmm. version of culture. They look at it very realistically, but it's kind of like heightened. Okay. You know, the humor in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? It's like the scene where What's-His-Name turns into the frog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or them showing up at a radio show and just singing into a can and turning it into a hit. It's like this heightened sense. Like, these things are obviously more, I mean, it's supposed to be this kind of like almost epic journey that they yeah. go on. But that's kind of what the Coen brothers are known for. They have these amazing sort of set pieces. And it, they take these very interesting characters and they have them progress through this journey of sorts. Through yeah. this very interesting and very stylistically well shot cinematography and film. And it felt like there was a a shadow of some of that stuff. Okay. The characters felt almost Cohen-esque, almost like the caricatures of sorts that the Cohen films often have. Yeah. But they didn't really feel like they were a strong enough version of that. It felt like they were like on a scale of one to 10 of like, you know, this character is going to be this way. They were like a six of that. And so it made for this very like blah kind of feel blah um which i don't i don't say that lightly i don't say my no. blahs lightly. <laughs> um so i didn't enjoy it on that sense and then I, I was getting to another point which is they did this thing which cohen like you know brother were out there they did they kind of mix in racial aspects because okay. of the time you know the slavery was an yeah. aspect and stuff um I don't know if slavery was still. I think it was. I don't know. What the, I don't know if it still was, time. but there was definitely still a lot of segregation and sure. the way that people are treating stuff. Um, you know, KKK was part of the film, mm. but the way that they wedge it into the story isn't like they're trying to have this, like strong in your face, like look at this horrible stuff. It's almost right. like a byproduct of we're just going to show you the way culture is, and this film didn't do that very well. There was this. I'm going to. Sp- Spoil some aspects here. Okay, it's, just give a spoiler warning, and then we're, we're spoiling warning. this movie, guys. Flat out, it's yeah. uh, 25% of Rotten Tomatoes. If you want to go see it, go yeah. check it out. Have a great day. Yeah, I don't think... <laughs> you might want to just listen so you don't waste your time, is what I'm going to say. But yeah, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, spoilers. So there's these two sub, these two plots that are going on. You have Matt Damon's character, who's going through this... I don't know what you would call it. A, a deceptive journey, where he kind of sets up his relationship with his wife to get her kind of nixed and done away with. And that happens within the first five minutes of the film. And you're supposed to kind of look at the kid then as this vehicle, but it jumps outside of the kid's Nikki out of his perspective. So often you don't know like who's real perspective because sure. you're kind of thinking it's Matt Damon's character, but then Matt Damon actually ends up being an antagonist, kind of a bad character. And so you're like, who am I supposed to connect with? And then on the side of that, there's this so suburbicon. It's this 1950s, you know, suburb, where this like idyllic lifestyle is kind of portrayed yeah. and this black family moves into the neighborhood and like immediately everybody starts responding very like negatively and very attackingly. You know, they're harassing them. They're not letting them buy groceries. Oh, they're that's right. I playing remember music outside. When this was in, uh, being screened in early screenings, that was like, it was like the thing where it's being, uh, it's like, culturally and socially relevant to what's happening right with but some the, stuff in the today. problem with it was is that it was so juxtaposed it had it didn't blend at all oh, okay with what was happening with the story with the, the only reason that those two stories connect is because nikki becomes friends with the kid of the black family that are neighbors to and that's like the only connection point there's like some minor reasons for why that violence because it, it ends up breaking up into you know violence around the, yeah. the house and stuff the, that just helps to prevent anything from getting caught over at the over at Nikki's house. Right. But other than that, there's really there's like no point to it. And that's the thing that I love so much about the Coen Brothers. It's like they can have a message or a tone, or they can show you sort of the the bad sides, the underbelly, the negative things of a of a culture of a time, but without like rubbing in your face and going, "Look how bad this is." Yeah. And it just felt like it was like so rubbing it in my face. And I, that'll appeal to some people. Like if. Like, if you want a film that's just about that type of cultural issue, then mm-hmm. that's going to be your thing. But I like a little bit more subtlety Yeah. I like yep. I like hinting towards something and just telling a story and then letting me understand, like, through the, the characters and the narratives and the way things are shot, what it is that I'm supposed to be taking from the film, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's the difference for me between high art and low art in that sense. And I, I felt you. like they took a Cohen film... Um, that was probably more of like a high art type thing with more thematic stuff, with stronger characters, with a, a better sense of set pieces. 
and then turn that into they remove stuff and turn it into sort of like a low art type thing. Very yeah. soft, very blah. It's like everything in the movie just was like, Meh. I think I giggled like once or twice. You kind of see where everything is going. Like immediately you see, okay, well that person's that and this person's this and that's going to happen. There was a couple moments, like one or two moments where things were a little bit unexpected, but not in the sense that it really left me wondering like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen here? It was more just like, uh, I don't know what they're doing right now. Oh, okay. That's what they're doing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, acting was for the most part fine. Okay. Um, the other thing was, is I was not prepared at all for the whole social commentary angle because okay. when I watched the trailers, like, I don't know if you watched the trailers, it, it kind of portrayed it as like this kind of dark comedy. Yeah. I didn't see anything like that right. in, the, in the trailers. Maybe. And it was much more dark than it was comedy. I okay. think I laughed maybe twice. One okay. of them was just like, so Matt Damon's character ends up, because his, the, it's hard to explain. But was it was it better than Hail Caesar? Uh, <laughs> I didn't like Hail Caesar. In case you didn't know that. Yeah, no. You didn't like it either, right? I didn't like it either. Yeah. I, I would say Hail Caesar was interesting more. Okay. Because it was showing some stuff that I was like, oh, well, that's new. That's kind of different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the dance numbers and the songs and stuff. Yeah. It was like, it was it was making an attempt to do something a little bit different. This film didn't really feel like it was making an attempt to do anything different. Okay. It felt like it was kind of selling out a okay. bit. Um. So yeah, Julian's character, Julian Moore's character, she plays both Rose and Margaret. Um, so she's like married to Matt Damon's character, and then she's also playing in the film her, you know, her sister. Okay, yeah. Um, and so Rose dies, so Margaret's left, <laughs> and then he basically ends up almost immediately hooking up with Margaret, <laughs> and you're just like, okay, so they're now they're together, and they never really explain that dynamic because. Again, spoilers here. So, oh, we, they've already tuned right, out yeah, if they don't want to just, hear it. So, I it's like all good. saying it too much. I'm <laughs> stuck in my head. Can't warn people too much these days about that. So, so he, it turns out Matt Damon was the one that circuit like orchestrated this entire series of events to get her killed, paying some mobsters oh, really? to show up at his house to get her killed to collect insurance for reasons. Weird. Like they just, they mentioned something about it because she's roses in a wheelchair and she kind of hates. Matt Damon's character a little bit, yeah. but like you never really get an understanding of where that's motivated by. So yeah. like, it basically just makes it seem like, well, they have a slightly unhappy marriage. And so he paid to have her killed and then starts hooking up with their sister. And so you're left with this kind of awful, like, who these that's people weird. are these people are yeah. weird. And I thought Matt Damon was like gonna be the good guy that, you know, all these bad people are yeah. around him and horrible things are happening. And that's how it kind of starts, but then very quickly and so because you never connected with Nikki, his son, uh -huh. really strong enough over the course of the film, you're left without a vehicle to really know who's my antagonist, right. who, am I, who am I getting into these different events. And because the the um, the racist stuff, the racist aspects, you know, the the way that people are treating the black family, because you never connect with the black family, you feel bad for them, but you don't know how to connect with that. Just like just you kinda, wouldn't connect with any character. You yeah, know, so you're okay. almost like feeling like there's no plot. Like there okay. was a plot, things happened, There, you know, A to B sequences and, you know, A plot, B plot, that was pretty much it. It's like okay. A and B plot. And I, gotcha. um, I wish there'd been a bit more humor. Okay. Coens are good at that kind of stuff. Um, the way that I believe that this happened was George Clooney and his other writer buddy got a hold of the Cohen script and then made a bunch of changes right that's what it sounds so like. so it wasn't like they all sat down and like at a table and were like hey let's all write this together it was like yeah they wrote a script and the script was actually very early on in the writing career so it wasn't oh, like they so had, it's like an earlier script yeah okay. it was like an early script in their career and so it was kind of like maybe that should have just been left <laughs> sure <laughs> seated where it was that right. so and uh people are not responding very well the satirical elements and this is kind of the last point that i'll make okay i'm a big fan of satire like i wrote a satire book that i'm publishing yeah and, I, I'm not amazing at it necessarily. Like I, I, I just really enjoy it. Yeah. When I see it, it satire can be very. The amazing thing about satire is it can be very high brow in a sense, or it can be very low brow. It can be very slapstick. The portrayal of sat the satire is more of just making fun of an idea, a concept, um, and it's supposed to be, I believe, making fun of this time period in this culture. But it didn't really do that. There was nothing about it that really satired it. It just made it look like really bad people making really bad decisions Yeah, because it wasn't strong enough looking at and breaking down individual aspects of the culture that were being satired. Yeah. It was more just like, okay, well this guy is unhappy. And so, so yeah, if the satire had been stronger, if the humor had been stronger, the cinematography was fine. The acting was fine. 
But if those two elements had been there, it would have elevated it much further along. Yeah. Um, because of that, I'm giving this film a D minus. D minus. Yeah, 62. All right, 62. Cool. Well, I won't be seeing it. You sure? Probably. <laughs> you don't think check it out? <laughs> no. No. It's no, a, man. It's, it, yeah. There's uh, too much TV. <laughs> it wasn't a great film, I, a, a great weekend, I would say, for a film okay. overall, but we have a big one coming up, so maybe yeah. that's kind of why they release some of these. We have Thor Ragnarok. I know. I'm so excited. Coming out. Yeah, I'm really excited for it, too. But uh, yeah, so that's it. So we're going to go ahead and wrap things up on the podcast then. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Uh, a couple of ways to get connected again before we finish. Uh, realviewmedia.com is our website. We've also got our Facebook, which is facebook.com slash realreviewmedia. We've got Real Review Media uh, on Twitter and Instagram, which are both at Real Review Media, as always spelled R-E-E-L. And then we'd love to hear your thoughts, your perspectives. Uh, let us know, you know, maybe what your favorite uh, Jigsaw film is, your favorite. Um, saw film. Saw, saw, film, right? saw one, jigsaw. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or, or 19, whatever one. Yeah, maybe yeah. you saw Suburbicon, maybe you thought it was amazing. So, you know, let us know. Yeah, yeah. do that. Um, you can definitely drop us an email, which is, RealReviewMedia at gmail.com. Do it. There it is. So, Matt, anything further? No, that's it. All right. Well, then, it's been real. It's been real.